trees are a frequently occurring data structure in computer science because they are a natural way of describing many useful structures. For example, a file system is often represented as a tree. Here is a portion of the file system from my computer. This portion of my file structure shows that I have a hard drive named C, and some of the directories on my hard drive are program files, program data, and users. Within the program files directory are four more directories, and within the users directory I have two directories, and then within the Jacob Schramm directory, which is inside of the users directory, I have two more directories shown. In general, the purpose of a tree is to represent data that has some sort of branching structure. Another example of a tree is the sequence of method calls that occur in the execution of a program, such as the calculation of the fourth Fibonacci number. So in this example, we're computing Fib4, and we're assuming the inefficient recursive definition of the Fibonacci numbers, where we recompute all the values. So Fib of 4 is the sum of Fib3 and Fib2. And if we had a Java program using this inefficient recursive definition, we would go down the left side of this tree first. So we would ask to compute Fib3. Well, that would require us to compute Fib2, which would require us to compute Fib1. This is a base case, so we would not go any deeper. Then we would go back up to the Fib2 method call and compute Fib0, also a base case. Those two would add to give us the actual value here. This would be added to Fib1, which is a base case. That would combine to give us the value of Fib3. But then we would have to recompute Fib2 on this side of the tree, which would involve calculating Fib1 and Fib0, which are, once again, base cases. So these two examples are a good starting point for understanding trees, but how do we formally define what a tree is? A tree is a set of nodes, and the nodes are connected by edges in a particular way. This is one of many possible valid trees. Trees are actually a special type of graph, but we'll discuss graphs in a later video. For now, just know that a tree is a graph with the following structure. First, if a tree is not empty, which is possible, then it contains at least one node. Every non-empty tree has exactly one special node called the root node. Computer scientists typically draw trees with the root node at the top, which we will say is at level one. However, some people would call this level zero. Just be aware of the different naming conventions out there. The root node can have downward edges or branches that connect to child nodes. So this particular root node has three children. These three children are siblings of each other. And this root node is the parent of these three children. Other nodes in the tree can also have their own child nodes. For example, this one has one child, this one has two children, and this one has three children. These children are at level two, and these are at level three. Nodes that have no children are known as leaves of the tree. For example, that is a leaf, and these are also leaves, as are these. However, I want to point out that it is not necessary for all of the leaves of a tree to be at the same level. I could have more nodes in the tree, and these would be at level four, and I could even have another branch off of the root that is a leaf over here. Non-leaf nodes, such as these, as 
well as this one, are sometimes called interior nodes. Now, for any node in a tree, we can define a subtree. So a subtree would consist of that node as well as all of the nodes in the tree beneath it. For example, if I pick this node, then I can encompass all of these nodes into a subtree. And this is only one of many possible subtrees. For example, this is a subtree. A subtree consists of a given node and all of its descendants. So I mentioned earlier that these nodes are the children of that node, and these two nodes, which are siblings, are the children of this node. That makes them the grandchildren of this node, and all of these nodes beneath this one node there are descendants of that particular node. Another concept I want to define is the height. So the height of this particular tree is 4. So the height is simply the number of levels we have. And if we start numbering our levels at 1, as I've chosen to do here, then the height will be equal to whatever the largest level is. We could also define the height recursively in the following way. So for example, I could say that the height of an empty tree is 0, and the height of a non-empty tree is 1 plus the height of the tallest subtree. Although this would have to be a subtree that excludes the root. So what do I mean by that? Well, going back to this tree here, we have a non-empty tree because we have a root node here. And so I could say that the height of this tree is 1 plus the height of whichever of these subtrees is tallest. So the height of this subtree is simply 1. The height of this subtree is 2. This one also has a height of 2, and this one has a height of 3. Of course, we wouldn't immediately know that. We would have to compute that recursively as well. And you can see that if you ask what the height of this subtree is here, it would be 1 plus whichever of these three subtrees has the tallest height. One more way of thinking about the height is to define it as the length of the longest path from the root to a leaf. So where are all the leaf nodes here? Well, there's one path from the root to this leaf. There's another path from the root to this leaf. And we talked about the length of the path well, the length is the number of branches or edges you would traverse. So the length of this path is 1, 2. The length of the path to this leaf node is 1, 2. And to this one, 1, 2. Over here, that length is 1, 2. 1, 2. 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3. Now, of course, the difference with this definition is that we're counting the branches that we're traversing. And so that ends up giving us a height of 3. So it depends on what definition you're using. We could arbitrarily say that we add 1 to that length, and that will give us the same 
height definition we're using here, where it's a height of four. Um, but either way, the path that goes from the root to the deepest leaf would correspond to, I guess, the tallest path through the tree. Now, one more fact I'll leave you with before ending this video is that yet another definition of a tree, or rather one sort of way of identifying a tree as opposed to a more general graph, which is once again a structure we'll discuss later, uh, is to note that in a tree there exists exactly one path between every possible pair of nodes. So I just showed that for each of the leaves we have, there's one path from the root to that node. And I can also pick any two arbitrary nodes, this one and this one, and see that there is only one possible path that gets us from that node to that node. We would go to the root and then down through the other branches over here to get to our target node. There are no alternate paths, which is to say there are no loops or cycles in this tree. And so that is what distinguishes a tree from a graph. We'll talk about more specialized trees in the next video.